Good morning, guys. This is Bathrobe Business. It is Thursday, December 21st, 2023. I got my coffee. Let's jump into the news. So I've got a number of stories that are very uh, interesting that I want to cover. The, let's just start with the uh, the market news. The Dow is up 240 points in the pre-market. Uh, S&P is up. Uh, NASDAQ is up. Oil is down. So current uh, Dow Jones number is 37,681. Uh, S&P is 4787, Nasdaq futures 16946, and oil is down to $72 a barrel. If you'll remember when we talked yesterday, oil was at uh, $75. Uh, gold, our favorite indicator, is still hovering at that new baseline. It's at uh, $2,054. It seems to have settled comfortably above $2,000, so that seems to be its new resting point. And it doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. It's To me, it's a troubling sign, uh, but maybe that is just finally inflation setting into the commodities market. But uh, we will see and we will wait. So uh, first story of the day, we're back to talking about the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. So now IKEA is another retailer that is saying that it is going to have products delayed because of the problems in the Suez Canal and the Houthi attacks. Currently, at least $80 billion worth of cargo has already been diverted from the Red Sea which provides access through the Suez Canal. Uh, the U.S. Central Command over the weekend said it shot down 14 unmanned aerial launches, uh, and it's still going to be continuing because they don't know where the attacks are coming from. So this is where the story starts to get interesting because uh, we haven't really talked about how they're launching these attacks. Most of these attacks are drone attacks, but uh, I think we're only getting part of the story. This is where the story start, stops leaving, uh, starts to leave the business sphere and go into the political sphere. There's definitely stuff here we do not understand. The explanation for why they're attacking is that they're Iran-backed uh, rebels, and they are attacking U.S. and foreign cargo ships because of the conflicts in Israel. That explanation does not make any sense. Uh, there's also talks that they're not uh, attacking Russian vessels, that they're only uh, attacking European and U.S. vessels. There is definitely something here politically going on that we don't understand. As we know, uh, you, uh, not just U.S. intelligence agencies, but intelligence agencies in general are often backing rebels for their own purposes. I'm sure there is something going on here with intelligence that we don't know, but whatever's being reported is probably not the truth. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I still have yet to understand exactly why the rebels are attacking cargo ships specifically and what they have to gain from this, who is uh, supplying them with these drones and how they're getting them, because these are not uh, simple Walmart purchase drones that you control from remote control. These are sophisticated guided systems, and they're getting them from somewhere. It could be Iran. I just don't see the explanation as to why they would do this. Okay, next story. Uh, I've got two uh, that are kind of linked. Uh, so the first is Smile Direct Club has gone bankrupt, uh, leaving uh, thousands uh, without treatment, many of whom are still on the hook to pay for treatment that they will not receive. Uh, so the next two stories kind of do bring a, a smile to my face simply because Smile Direct Club is a competitor. Uh, I am in the dental industry, and so Smile Direct Club is in competition with one of my companies. So I'm always happy when uh, one of my competitors goes under. Uh, but the second story is one I'm going to focus on a little bit more because it's more recent. So Smile Direct Club had gone bankrupt a couple weeks ago, and uh, Bird Scooters has just filed for Chapter 11. So Bird Scooters, one of the dozen scooter companies that's probably in your city, have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The company raised more than $275 million in 2019, which pushed its valuation to $2.5 billion. So... Uh, this company is clearly reaping the results of higher interest. So this is why I like high interest rates. Uh, I have always been pro raising interest rates. I think it's good for the economy. I think it pushes efficiency. Uh, every time we have low interest rates, we get stupid companies like this. Now, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against scooters. I have nothing against electric scooters. I've used bird scooters or whatever the scooter company it is in my neighborhood uh, before. I think they're great. I think they're fun. But it is not worth $2.5 billion after raising $275 million. This is just the pinnacle of Wall Street excess, where you could just come up with a BS company and say that it has a market value of $2.5 billion, and all of a sudden you get millions of dollars in investment, build a company that is unprofitable, and are just able to coast because people can keep printing money for free and giving it to you. This is why the economy becomes inefficient. This is why we have disparity between Wall Street and Main Street. This is why the wealthiest 1% continue to grow while everybody else shrinks. 
is because of companies like this and structures like this. Now, obviously, bird scooters has not led to the downfall of the American middle class. But this type of system where you could just come up with a BS idea and start printing money and building fake valuations is what has caused the downfall of the American middle class. Because you have these companies that don't actually produce something of value, but are worth billions of dollars. And when interest rates are high and money is not free, you can't do that. So uh, to Jerome Powell, keep raising interest rates. It's good for us. And even those that say, well, we can't afford houses. The reason houses are unaffordable is entirely because of supply. Because instead of investing in housing and tangible goods, we've been investing in scooters for $2.5 billion. If we had invested in housing and the housing prices were low, houses would be entirely affordable. Let's not forget, 6.5% interest is not that high. My parents, boomers, were purchasing at higher interest rates. My dad's first house, I think, was at 8 or 9%. But the reason he was able to afford it was because housing prices were low because supplies were higher. So instead of focusing on scooters and Smile Direct Club and whatever other dog walking business you can come up with, it's apparently worth billions of dollars because you built a cheap app, it is not worth as much as having affordable housing. So this is good. Keep up the good work. Raise interest rates. Uh, the last story is about U.S. Steel. So this is a major story that isn't getting much traction. It's not on Forbes. It's not on CNBC. It's not on Bloomberg. Uh, U.S. Steel is announced to sell uh, to a Japanese company. So U.S. Steel, which is the last major uh, steel producer in the United States, has announced it is going to sell itself for $14.9 billion in a full cash offer. So, wow, $14.9 billion in cash to Nippon Steel, a Japanese-owned conglomerate. Uh, th this is kind of a big story because it starts to come into play with geopolitics. So U.S. Steel uh, is one of the last major steel producers. Now, as we know, steel has suffered greatly since the 1980s, right? The Rust Belt is not producing as much as they did. Uh, Bethlehem Steel has gone under. Dozens of others have gone under. U.S. Uh, steel has been the only one that has remained. Uh, the last of the titans from kind of the gilded age and the sale to nippon steel starts to call into question about geopolitics of if it's safe for the u.s to have its steel production owned by a foreign entity now japan is uh, an ally there's nothing wrong with that japan has purchased uh, other companies in the u.s before uh, so this isn't necessarily new but i think in the wake of COVID, we're asking a lot of these questions I've given this a lot of thought myself if this is good or bad, and I've settled on the fact that I think there's nothing wrong with it, and I am fully endorsing it. Uh, the reason I say that is because we deserve this because of the, the stuff I just talked about with Bird Scooters, Smile Direct Club, uh, all these companies that have had billion-dollar valuations, yet we didn't focus on what we should have, and that was U.S. manufacturing, U.S. Uh, tangible goods. We focused on floofy ideas and feel-good ideas instead of focusing on what we're supposed to, whereas other co countries are much more disciplined with this, China, Japan, even Europe. Uh, Germany was much more disciplined with, with real, tangible companies than we are, and this is what we deserve. So I welcome Japan. I think they'll do a better job at running these companies and running uh, U.S. Steel than the U.S. has, and I have no nothing against it because we kind of deserve it. Uh, we have focused on the wrong things. We've become a silly people. And I think the purchase of U.S. Steel is only going to strengthen the company and not ruin it. I don't think Japan is going to shift operations offshore. That's not generally what Japan does. Uh, Japan owns dozens of companies within the U.S. and none of it is being manufactured outside of it. Uh, Toyota is manufactured domestically. Honda is being manufactured domestically. Uh, all of American whiskey is owned by Japan and has been for decades. Uh, the Satori Group uh, owns uh, Jim Beam and most of Tennessee companies. So uh, Japan is likely to keep all of the production here, but you're probably going to see greater gains in efficiency, more production, and uh, better operations overall. So uh, I fully endorse it. I know that's probably the unpopular opinion because we should be protecting U.S. companies. Well, if you wanted to protect U.S. companies, you should have been focusing on U.S. companies much earlier. If you neglect the, a market, it's obviously going to have somebody else come in and swoop it up. So I fully endorse this. I think it's good. I'm kind of angry today for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, again, I think this is going to be good for the U.S. economy. 
uh, that's pretty much it. That's the last story of the day. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there.